guys, I got this repair the other day. It was a little while ago and I quoted for it. It's a big repair. So this violin's been in the family of the player for a while. It's a Hopf violin. Hopf was a really well-known violin making family in Klingenthal and Saxony. So that's all part of the Falkland area where a lot of instruments were made. But they were some of the earliest makers in that area in the late 1700s, early 1800s. What's special about this repair is actually just a little thing the client said to me before I was about to start. Because we, we discussed the repair, it's, it's a significant cost, but it's worth it. Uh, the, the instrument will be worth a lot more. When we were just about to hang up, before he made the decision, the guy said, are you going to have fun doing this repair? And it kind of threw me. I've never been asked that question. And I thought for a moment, of course, I'm, I'm going to have fun working on this instrument. But it also made me think a lot about my whole career. Because where there's fun, when you're doing something, there's a creative expression, there's there's a form of love, there's you know, there's something special that you that you do when you're having fun rather than having to do something where quite often it's something you have to do and it kind of almost creates a bit of stress because you have to do it. Whereas when something's fun, you just do it because it's fun. Uh, I mean, it's like that with a lot of string playing. And Sometimes you work so hard on a piece that it, all the fun is gone. And it's so important to put the fun back into the playing because that's where your creative expression is and your love is. So I'm going to share this repair with you. Now, it has about nine badly repaired cracks. You can see them all. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, there's one. Now, it has a repair label by a maker who lived in Brisbane, or should I say maker who lived in Brisbane in the 1950s. And unfortunately, this maker took to using Edward here, which is a, an artificial glue, which is really hard to get off. So I'm, I'm, I'm strongly hoping that that's not the kind of glue the maker, the, the person used here. But I'm about to find out. I'm just opening the top plate at the moment. This will probably be one or two videos, this whole repair. So I'm just on the bottom block here. The, the whole side here has, has released already. And on these, some of their hop violins, some of the early hop violins, they didn't even have a proper top block. The neck and the top block were one, uh, which is kind of an unusual design, but this one, this one's had a neck graft, so someone's probably put a top block into it at some point in its history. What will I find in here? It looks okay. It's had a sound post patch done. It's had numerous crack repairs, so yeah, I probably won't do much about the sound post patch. It looks like it fits well, but a lot of the other cracks are very very messy and they have to be restored properly so my first step is going to be just systematically I'll probably work just around the bottom here first and I'll basically systematically open one crack after the other so I basically soak these in water and I'll do the ones that are the most open first because I don't like having too many cracks open at once and the one that stands out is the one right here so I'm just opening and closing it at the moment. <laughs> if I push too hard, I'll snap the whole instrument, so I've got to be very careful. All right, so the back and sides, look, there's a little bit of a fluff ball in there. It's it's very loose, but it is a fluff ball. There it is. Hasn't rolled up. Maybe they didn't practice enough and they didn't roll it up enough. I'll be cleaning the inside of the instrument, and then uh, I'll be doing the top repairs. All right, let's just vacuum clean this out. I think that's going to be the easiest way of going. Here we go, much cleaner. What's interesting is you can actually see the hop stamp right here. I'm going to do a little bit of research. There were a lot of makers in the hop family. Maybe that stamp might give me a clue who the actual maker is, which would be interesting. And uh, if, if I can identify the actual maker, it'll have a higher value if it's identified the instrument. Um, it's always good to be able to identify. It was actually 
it's actually quite well made it has like top blocks and bottom blocks so in that area at some point they actually did away with the blocks but it's actually a neatly made instrument uh, it looks like the top block may have been done afterwards it's got a repair label from 1956 the back the sides look totally fine the uh, neck raft is a little bit like it's the area is really worn around here so I'm gonna have to think about how I can protect that there's a lot of wearing around here so I'll have to retouch that a lot of wearing around here you can see it's been played so much that the edge is actually worn down which is remarkable that's an awful lot of playing and playing in higher positions but yeah, I'll, I'll try and find out a bit more about its story as well while I'm working on it. The bridge leaves a little bit to be desired. <laughs> that is a very basic bridge. We won't be using that. My first step is basically to soak the crack in water and then just to leave it for probably 20 minutes or so. So I just use a strip of cotton wool soaked in water and I put it on the crack. I'm actually going to put some cotton wool on here as well, just on this uh, this old repair clip. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside and that has to soak for at least 20 minutes, if not longer. Now, back to some other work. Okay, so it's been a few days. So I've actually been away for the weekend, but uh, we're back now. So what I've done is I have actually just soaked the next two cracks which is these ones here these have come undone so they're now fully open a little bit wet so i am currently actually cleaning them so i soaked them with cold water for a good part of the day and now i'm just washing the cracks out with hot water just to get a lot of the dirt and stuff like that out and then i'm going to just clamp them and let them dry and then the next step will be gluing those ones as well so i might not actually film myself gluing them because there are nine cracks all up and it's very similar to the last crack i did but it's nice, I'm moving forward uh, with the restoration. It's coming together nicely. Okay, a few more days have passed and uh, I've glued like this crack and this crack on here. So my next project is uh, gonna be just this crack here. I wasn't quite happy with the first time I glued it, so I'm going to go again. And then um, I will actually start soaking the area up here. So once this crack is glued, this whole area here is fully glued up. So I like to do one area at a time. It's just better to, like, makes it much easier to focus. Okay, so I've uh, heated my glue, got everything ready. That's come together really beautifully here. So I just gotta wait for this to dry. For some of these more difficult cracks, I'm actually using sturgeon blood out glue. And uh, it's apparently extremely strong, but it's still reversible, which, uh, you know, is important to me. Fantastic, but I'm, I'm very excited. I've got this little area glued, so I'm gonna reinforce that. So I will start soaking this area. I'm actually gonna start doing that right away because this instrument can multitask. I can glue and and soak at the same time. Okay, so I've got some cotton wool because that retains the humidity. It's actually quite dry here at the moment. I know, weird, you know, like Queensland is known for its humidity. While the coast of Queensland is, the inland is actually quite dry. So that can basically do its thing. So I'll probably clean that crack in about half an hour or so. After half an hour of soaking, that should be totally fine. And uh, the other crack can glue, like that'll just do its thing. I'll leave the clamp on probably till tomorrow, actually. All right, well, that's that step for now. And uh, yeah, now, now we wait. Okay, so it's been a few days. I've been quite busy. I managed to get this open, this crack here. So I soaked that, washed it, and it's now open. So just ready to glue. So I've got my glue all hot and all ready. So I will rub glue in the crack here. So I'm just going to glue a small section. Then I'll put the clamp on. By gluing it in sections, it means I've got a much better chance of getting it all uh, aligned. So I've only glued about this 
area between here and there but it's good actually having the other sections dry because uh, that will kind of stabilize the area okay so that needs to dry again and i'll keep working on it tomorrow Okay, it's been a little while. I've just been really busy, but I'm finally getting back into it. Now, I did do a little bit of gluing on the reinforcement cleats just along here. And I'm just going to glue some more now. I'm going to put a few more just down along here. That should get this area all stabilized. I've still got to finish gluing this crack. It's actually the main one. There's a little bit of trouble, like maybe a tiny bit of trouble with this crack here and uh, there's a couple just down the bottom here. All right, let's get these cleats on. Now I've quickly got to get the clamps on. Okay, that's it for now. I'll keep gluing these cleats on until they're all finished and uh, then I'll move to cutting them back and neatening them up. Okay, it's afternoon. I uh, finally got around to doing some more work on this violin. So I'll just glue the next two cleats on. Here we go. Okay, that's good. So that is this side here and this side done. So I've just got to finish off uh, like the cracks that are here. Yeah, it's good. We're getting close. Very keen to get this repair finished. The player's going to come and pick it up, I think, in about three weeks. So I'd like to get it finished. I'd like to get it closed within the week. There's also this little spot here. It's just where it's slightly split off. So I'm going to glue that on as well. I'm going to slip some glue behind there. I'm going to actually kind of squeeze the glue in here so it goes all the way through. Lean that off just a little bit. So that's all glued on now as well. So I'm going to leave that dry overnight and get back to it tomorrow. So I have taken all the clamps off and I'm going to work on this crack here now. And one of the things I've identified is that I'm going to have to put a strip of timber in here. So the best way to do that is with my little friend, the Japanese saw. It's super scary because, you know, I'm, I'm here I am, I'm working on a 170 year old instrument and I'm literally cutting into it, but it is the best way of doing this. So here we go. So I have to make sure I cut all the way through so that I can fit a slither like of timber all the way through. What I'm going to do now that I've actually cut right through, I'm actually going to glue the rest of the crack. Uh, that way that's all stable when I put this slither of timber in. Now I've just got to glue the top end of this crack. Yep, that worked beautifully. So I'm just gluing the part from here to there. Then I've got to fit a slither of timber from here to there. And uh, this part of the crack's already glued. And then I've just got to work out what I'm going to do down the bottom here. I may have to fit another slither down the bottom part here. <sighs> Today is Friday. It's my client free day. So I finished gluing this crack yesterday. I also put on a few more cleats just along here. So I'm just going to take the clamps off and then I'm going to work on that little slither that I was going to fit into the crack. So it's going to be interesting. It'll be very hard to make because it's it is a fraction of a millimeter thick, uh, so it's actually really hard to work with. It's quite interesting being able to see a see through the crack. So that's actually where I cut into the crack to put the little slither in. So first thing I have to do is I kind of have to look at the wood. Because I've got some wood here. I think this piece is about 40 to 50 years old. I'm just going to look for another piece. Yeah, I need a fairly dense piece of wood, so I'm just going to look for a bit in the back here. So I've got this, this piece of wood here that is it's really old. I don't need much, so I might just split a tiny piece off. I'm going to use it for base bars because uh, this is really well seasoned. There we go. That's heaps. I'm just going to cut this a little bit further. Okay, so it, we're getting close, but I, I still got to go a bit further so I can get all the way through. So it's very narrow. We're talking about 0.5 of a millimeter towards the top, but down the bottom, 0.3 of a millimeter. So it's very, very thin. 
I'm getting very close, it's pretty exciting. I'm just gonna use this now because I, I'm probably more accurate than a scraper, like it's a neater cut. Okay, time to glue. I've gotta be really careful because the moment this gets wet, it'll just go super soft. I have to rub a lot of glue through here and then I've gotta very quickly insert this. So it's gonna be a very quick operation. Oh, that's beautiful. That's working out really nicely. So I literally just need to let this dry and I'll get back to it. It's evening after a big day. I am just gonna cut back this little area here. This is all dry now. There's just a slither of timber sticking out. So I'm gonna carefully cut that back. So I'm trying very carefully to hover with this just above the varnish line. I mean, obviously this is not a super expensive Italian instrument, but I still, you know, I'm still passionate about getting this looking good. That's very close. So the rest of that I'm actually going to do when I do the final retouching of the instrument. I've still got to cut the inside, so I'm going to do the rest of uh, these areas here. I have to do a bit more gluing on this crack, then I've got to reinforce this and I'm getting very close to actually closing up this violin, which is super exciting. Um, I've got to polish under here first, this area, which is underneath the fingerboard. It looks to me like they didn't varnish this area the same as the rest of the instrument, and quite often they were super enthusiastic, and they actually put the fingerboard on before varnishing the instrument. So it was a bit challenging to varnish under there. It was kind of when first instruments first started to be mass produced. And so that area, suddenly people, you know, there was this middle class that could afford to play stringed instruments. So a lot of violins went all over the world. And so they figured out a way of making violins a bit cheaper. So the area in Mark uh, around Mark Neukirchen, which is called Vogtland, that area had just been through a kind of a depression because uh, after the 30 year war and, and so before that, they were actually a very lucrative iron ore mining area and, and things were going really well for the area. And then they had, they had I think close to a hundred years of, you know, things just not going well for them. Maybe small, some small farming, a lot of poverty. So when instrument making came to that area, it actually really um, provided a lot of employment. But it also because uh, because it had been an impoverished area, it provided a lot of cheap labor. So they were able to make instruments a lot cheaper than they used to. It's yet another day and I am just going to glue this one crack. So I've soaked this with cold water, this little area, and uh, it wasn't quite matching. So I just want to clean it and then glue this section. I might be using some peroxide because uh, it's very dirty, it's very dark. First of all, I'll just clean it with some hot water. Okay, I'm going to grab some strong peroxide. All right, so I'm just gonna let that sit for a bit and then I will glue that shortly. Okay, so you can see how much lighter that is now after I applied the peroxide. So now I am just going to glue this. Just put a tiny bit on the other side. So it's fully matching on this side, which is the important side, but on the underside it's not matching, which tells me that last time they glued it, they must have just taken some of the material off. They must have glued it crooked. Oh well, at least this time it's glued correctly. All right, that just needs to dry. And then I can put the final few cleats on here. And then I should be able to close the instrument. Okay, so all of these have been cut back. So I'm just gonna go over them with sandpaper. So my goal here is not to sand too much of the old top plate. Okay, the exciting moment has come. I basically shaped all the cleats inside here. They're looking good. I'm very happy with them. I checked over the back, so I'm happy with that as well. There's an interesting repair label by Howard Sleeth, uh, who was a local, like a Brisbane repairer. Don't think he had overseas training, but he did his best at the time. There's also the Hopf stamp. 
take a look at this. You can see the tool marks on the insides of the ribs. That was quite common. My guess is that they made a new top block for this violin. So that would have been the repair Paris in the 1950s. I actually found a letter written by the repairist to the owner in the 1950s. And also a newspaper article because uh, the owner was busking in the street to raise money for a kid that had been electrocuted. Just someone obviously did some dodgy electrical work and the tap that he turned was electrical. And so, yeah, it was electrified and this kid got electrocuted, ended up with a lot of problems. And, uh, and the player of this violin spent ages to raise money to, uh, to help this this kid out. Yeah, so the owner of this violin busked to uh, raise money for this kid. I uh, I polished the area under the fingerboard, so this is going to be underneath here, just so that I don't have to try and get under there once the top plate is uh, glued onto the instrument. Everything's ready to go. I have very carefully checked over the entire instrument. The time has come to glue this violin together. Okay, I'm um very happy with that. That's uh, that's all together. I'm just gonna clean off the glue a little bit uh, around here. This violin literally just has to dry overnight and then tomorrow I will take all the clamps off. It'll be very exciting and then I can start on the filling and retouching of the cracks. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here for now and then I'm gonna post the next video really soon. It's possible that by the time you're watching it, the second one might already be available. So just check it out. But if not, I'll post the second one within a few days. It's just so exciting uh, that the story of the instruments and I really want to make sure that I show you how I retouch and do all the finishing touches to that violin. So anyway, like the video, subscribe, hit the little bell so you find out as soon as I post the next video. Keep making beautiful music and I'll see you soon. Bye!